Ikea is probably not the first name that comes to mind when you think about buying a bike. That's because they're known for their flat pack furniture, and they make a lot of it. But buried at the very back of their catalog is a bike. It's called the Ikea Slada. It's not really all that surprising that Ikea would make a bike. After all, they're a Swedish company with headquarters in the Netherlands, both countries that have more bikes than people. I'm willing to spend $399 to check out this Ikea bike. The only problem is I don't have an Ikea anywhere near me. Four hours is the closest store. Fortunately, they have a website that I can buy from. They also offer shipping and they have a 365 day money back guarantee. So it looks like I'm about to buy a Slada. Slada is skid or slide sideways in Swedish. Well, that's kind of what I experienced when I purchased it. I bought this bike on November the 1st and it was supposed to be delivered a week and a half later. To my surprise, it took 46 days for this thing to show up at my door. It arrived via transit service in a Penske rental truck loaded with IKEA products. These guys deliver IKEA products all day every day and had no idea IKEA made a bike. I've never ordered anything from IKEA, but I do know they're known for two things. One is their flat packing and the other is their vague instructions. This flat pack was totally minimalist, about what I expected, but it did have some detailed information about bike sizing and the required tools, which were included. Now that I'm an IKEA customer, I want the full IKEA experience. So that means I'm not gonna use a bike stand or any bike tools. I'm clearing out a spot in my living room, I'm setting this thing on the floor, and I'm gonna put it together the way a normal IKEA customer would. I couldn't wait to get the first look at my new IKEA bike. It was packaged very well, about like a local bike shop bike, and definitely a step up from a big box bike. The bike itself came out in one piece, and inside the box is a secondary box with all the bicycle accessories. Aside from that, there are only some semi-rigid plastic inserts that are stuck on three places on the inside of the outer box. That's to protect the areas where the bike comes in contact with the box, and it does a really good job. The bike came out completely scratchless. Not only that, both rims were true, and the disc brake was perfectly intact without any warping. This, in my opinion, is the way that all companies should ship bikes. The accessory pack includes a few bike components, as well as the famous IKEA instructions. On top of the instructions, there's a bicycle maintenance schedule that'll help you keep your bike running once you get it together. There's also some documentation that let me know that I jumped into buying the Slada before I really knew what I was buying. That's because I noticed there was paperwork for things like a headlight and a tail light that I didn't even know were included with the bike. As far as the components go, they're a pretty good sign that this bike may be of high quality. These pedals are aluminum alloy with rubber inserts and seem very well made. You get an included quick release skewer for the front wheel and also a tool kit that contains three wrench sizes and a uniquely designed multi-wrench. As you'll see as this video progresses, the Slada comes with quite a few surprises. The first of which is with the kickstand. It's actually a center stand that looks more like a center stand you would find on a moped or a scooter. The final components are the LED headlight, the headlight mount, a tail light, and a bolt for putting on that center stand. And getting that center stand in place is probably the only frustrating part of assembling this bike. And that's only due to the tools that are included and the limited finger space to get everything tightened up. Once installed, that center stand turns out to be pretty awesome. Works as a great bike rack, makes it easy to get everything else put on the bike. So far the only letdown is with the included lights. They're not rechargeable, you have to use alkaline batteries. I assume I could use rechargeable alkalines, but heck, what am I complaining for? I didn't even know I was getting the lights in the first place. It's said that first impressions speak a thousand words. And in the case of the Slada, my first impression after assembly was that this is sturdy. And I'm not alone in that observation. Everyone that I've shown this to has said within the first few words that it's sturdy or it's well built. And that's because the Slada is a multi-purpose bike. It's for both commuter and utility duties. After all, it can carry 352 pounds of combined rider and cargo weight, and it can tow up to 120 pounds. 
That means it must have not only quality components, but also a quality finish. And that's why the entire bike is powder coated. The frame is an off-white, almost a grayish white powder coat. Everything else that's not white is an aluminum silver powder coat. Now I mentioned there are quite a few surprise features on the Slada. And that starts up on the stem. It's not a quill stem, it's a threadless stem. And that's not the surprise. The surprise is that the stem is adjustable. It has an elastic assist release. And this means that with a wrench, you can adjust the height of the handlebars from a low race configuration up to a high casual cruiser configuration. As a matter of fact, you can go much higher than the height I'm showing here. Even the simple front disc brake levers hide a special surprise. I've been frequently asked, what are those buttons on the head tube? Those aren't buttons, those are mount points for a front utility rack. The Slada is mostly aluminum. The only parts that aren't aluminum are the steel front fork and the two steel fenders. The wheels are powder coated aluminum and the tires are Kenda. I'm not sure of the model, but they have a decent street tread. And you get two different wheel sizes with the Slada. A 26 or a 28 inch. Yeah, I said 28 inch mentioned earlier that this bike had a front disc brake, 160mm Tektro mechanical disc brakes. Now that's up front. In the rear, it has a coaster brake. The frame itself is one style fits all and it's very minimalist. As a matter of fact, it's so minimalist that there's only one sticker on the entire bike. That's an IKEA logo on the lower seat tube. The seat tube itself is excessively fat at the bottom and then tapers up towards the top. That leads to an aluminum seat post and a saddle that is the most comfortable saddle I've ever ridden on a street bike. Where the Slada really starts to surprise is in the drivetrain. It features a Continental belt drive system. Made it up to that, a Pro Wheel aluminum crank arm. The belt itself is Kevlar and IKEA gives it a 10 year warranty. And that's made it up to a SRAM Automatics internally geared two speed hub. On the rear top of the main frame, there are two more mount points, and that's for a rear utility rack. There are two more mount points on the lower end of the seat stay on both sides of the bike. That's for connecting the towable utility trailer. Another unique feature is the elliptical bottom bracket. Talked to a mechanic at the local bike shop, and he said they use these elliptical bottom brackets to help adjust the tension on the belt drive system. All the features in the world are great, but in the end, it's how does the bike ride that matters the most. And pleasantly, it rides surprisingly well. That two-speed internally geared rear hub really makes it easy to get going. And as you put more pressure on the pedals, it'll move into the higher gear to give you more power. On top of that, another pleasant surprise was this bike has a very low center of gravity. So that means it's incredibly nimble. It's very easy to dart through any small gap or to make quick and easy turns. Anyone would feel very at home on this bike with minimal time. It's not intimidating at all to ride. And the ride is incredibly smooth. I don't know if it's because of the weight of the bike, it weighs around 40 pounds, or that steel fork. But whatever it is, it equates to a very smooth, easy ride. And that rear belt drive system is incredibly quiet. I particularly enjoy having a front disc and a rear coaster brake. That means I can hold the camera in one hand and still stop using both brakes. To say that I really enjoy riding the IKEA Slada is an understatement because I have enjoyed every second on this thing and I'm incredibly happy that I purchased it. The Slada is a good enough bike that I wake up at the break of dawn in 19 degree weather to go film and ride. And the two speeds of internally geared goodness they're kind of fun, but they are a little bit limiting. The best I can describe it is it's kind of like having a Huffy Cranbrook, but with an easy gear to start out on. You start out very easy, but then it gets not hard, but just about like a standard cruiser. Which means you can end up crawling slowly on even slight inclines. Really notice this when I'm coming through intersections and cars are having to wait on me. Anything more than a subtle incline starts to blur that line between how much pressure you can put on the pedal sitting down versus the need to stand up. And riding this thing up an actual hill? That's a struggle. This is a hill leading up to my house. 
I had to stand on the pegs and barely made it up the hill. If it were any steeper, I would have been pushing the bike. By contrast, I can ride my Redux 3 up this hill in any gear without a problem. I didn't expect a hill climber out of the Slada, but I would really be interested in it with maybe a 5-speed rear hub. The included headlight and tail light were mostly useless during the day, but as it got darker, I found out that the headlight's actually pretty good for riding at night. It's more of a be-seen headlight than something you can use to see the road at night. But it's a free feature that came with the bike, much like the belt. This nighttime shot shows the headlight's capabilities and also that it has about a 15 degree pivot. That's a nice additional feature. That's my first look at the IKEA Slada. I'm really pleased with the bike. And for a commuter or a utility bike where someone would need to carry some cargo, I think it'd be hard to beat in a flat urban area. The amount of weight the bike can carry for a cargo bike puts it well beyond any other bike in its price range as far as I know. Add to that that this bike has won several design awards and it's so uniquely styled that it stands out. So if you want something that's going to be unique and catch attention, the IKEA Slada is most certainly the way to go. Thanks for watching and have a great day.